Now let's burst some myths about exercise. I always tell my patients, if you do not have exercise, if you do not take exercise regularly, you have no right to eat. A person who does not do exercise is vulnerable to develop many diseases and particularly professionals like doctors, charter accountants, you know, business people. On an average, they sit in one chair for six to eight hours without moving their legs, without making strolls, without going to get themselves with a glass of water. I have seen some top executives, they sit on the table, sit at the table and <clears throat> if by any chance the pencil rolls down the table, they put a bell, Abdul pencil now. You understand, that is a habit people have. They don't even get up to get a glass of water. Only thing they get up to go to pass urine, luckily. The point is, if you just sit in one place for six hours, without moving your limbs or without doing anything, it is as bad as smoking 20 cigarettes a day. So this, you have to remember, your vulnerability to coronary artery disease increases. Remember one thing, diabetes and coronary artery disease are two faces of one coin. If you have a diabetes, you are booked to go on a cardiac cath table one day. And if you survive that, cancer is waiting for you. So it's a linear relationship to inactivity, postprandial blood sugar and lipid abnormality. They all form a compound syndrome known as this metabolic syndrome. And Indians are particularly vulnerable because genetically we are called as thin fat Indians. Now what is this concept of thin fat Indians? At the BMI, at the weight of say 60 kilos, our waist circumference is more than 80 centimeters. All our fat is accumulated on your abdomen. Our fat which should be in the muscles, shoulders, like Caucasians, is not there. And all the fat that you have on the abdomen is a white fat, which is a dead weight. The brown fat with the young children have a chubby chicks, adorable fat, what we call it, which is a healthy fat, which has mitochondria. And that is why it becomes brown. But the white fat is devoid of mitochondria, no energy houses. It's a dead weight and that fat is very close to your portal circulation. Whatever you eat has to go to liver for metabolism. There is a rise in free fatty acid from the fat and your liver is studded with fat because of the visceral fat and that goes straight into your arteries and blocks the arteries. So you have to reduce your white fat. Therefore, your fat intake has to be reduced in your diet. In the kitchen language, you should not use more than two teaspoonful of either rice bran oil or ghee. And that's about all. Because there is a lot of invincible fat. Invisible fat is seen. Invisible fat is seen in milk. Invisible fat is seen in many other preparations in our diet. While fat when you take ghee, you know you are taking fat. But yet, there is a lot of fat in your diet and therefore one has to limit the extra cooking fat in your own diet. Fatty substances are very nice, they are tasty. Some of the taste has to be cultivated from childhood. They are from childhood, children should be taught to eat simple food. In fact, the children, if they are taught to eat simple food, they will eat at home. But if children are fond of fast food, which they easily fall into a trap, <coughs> many children are given pocket money and they go and eat in their canteens. In fact, it is our mission to see the canteens serve healthy food and don't give them the American fast food. 
which I call is a weapons of mass destruction. Burgers, colas, milkshakes, they are dense, they are energy dense drinks and food stuff. Chips, particularly, they taste very nice, they look very attractive. And what happens? The child is in the school for six to seven hours. The child is in the house for barely 20% of his time. And he is in constant contact with the peer pressure because his classmates may be bringing some food. Even if you give him home food, the children have lost all the taste for home food. Like poli saladu, like poli bhaji. They have forgotten to eat. Unfortunate. Now, do you know 45% of Bombay, India's population is diabetic? and 46 to 60 percent children are overweight below the age of 12 like americans so childhood obesity is coming very very slowly but surely and <coughs> children have no playgrounds the whole objective of schooling is academics and standing first and getting grades there are no special marks for sports in fact, the sport should be included in syllabus. If anything is included in the syllabus, people take it seriously. If anything is associated with marks, they will study it seriously. In our time, <coughs> we had a compulsory Surya Namaskar. Danda Jor Baitak. This was a ritual affair in our school. Swimming, if you get medals, you would get additional grades in the SSC exam. So this has to go back into society. The more healthy society that you look for is an active society, not bookworms, not people who are glued to. You know what is the average skin time of a child in Bombay? Seven hours, three hours on TV and four hours on computer and remaining time on mobile. So average skin time of a child should not exceed more than two hours. That's difficult. This is unfortunately bad influence of culture. But we have to realize before it's too late. The epidemic of diabetes is worsening. The complication rates of diabetes are increasing. Number of people dying of kidney and heart disease are too, just too many. And therefore, this is yet a preventable epidemic. If people act more intelligently, they do introspection, they take the advice of our ancestors and their wisdom, then we will prevent the catastrophe which is impending in the future. Thank you very much.